Hi there, it's James Arter here. I hope you're doing really well. Do you need to transfer your projects over from Logic into Pro Tools or any other DAW? I'm gonna show you what I do, which allows you to transfer both the audio and the MIDI. If you're interested, stick around. If you liked the video, please do that thing and hit the old thumbs up at the bottom. And also, if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos and hit a subscribe and a notification bell and you'll be alerted when they come out. Also, if you sign up to the mailing list, I'll send you some free stuff. You'll get an EQ cheat sheet as well as some one shot drum hits that you can use within your mixes. OK, let's get started. Now there are multiple ways that you can transfer your audio into another DAW and both of them have their benefits and drawbacks. So I'm gonna show you the two that I do. The first one will be exporting all of the audio files and the second one is using AAF. And finally, I'll show you how to transfer the MIDI as well, which can also be really beneficial for the transfer of the audio. Okay, let's get started. So the first way is done by doing the export all audio tracks feature. Essentially what it's going to do is it's going to take an individual bounce of every single track that's in your session. So as you can see here, I've got a whole bunch of tracks and it's a mixture of audio and MIDI. Now this is generally the way that I use the most, especially if you're taking it into another DAW to mix or sending it off to another mixing engineer to mix. It's the most reliable method and it's going to translate to every single DAW without a problem. Now because it's bouncing every individual track, it's basically going to turn everything into audio even if it's not. So, so these MIDI channels for example, they won't be taken over as MIDI, they'll be turned into audio. So especially if you're using that for a mix, that's going to do a perfect job. But before you do the export, you need to make sure that you've gone through the session and tidied it up. Because for example, if you've got any bad edits here and there, it's going to take over those edits as well because you're not gonna be able to edit it afterwards. Also, with anything where you've got a multiple comp of a track like this, or a vocal which has multiple takes in that same comp, it's only gonna take the main comp that you've left on the top. So again, make sure that you've got all of your edits right. Also, something else to bear in mind is, not only is it gonna export everything which is on this arrange screen, it will export everything which is hidden as well, or everything that's muted. So if you wanna prevent that, then you need to actually turn off the track itself. It sounds obvious, but there's, there's a few times in the beginning when I didn't do that and then I'd end up exporting a whole load, whole load of things that I didn't need. So the main thing to remember is if the track is on, it's going to export it. If it's not, it won't. So just double check those hidden tracks and make sure that you don't have any of those on. When you feel like you're ready, the safest thing to do is to choose a cycle range at the top here. Start it from the beginning of your project up to the end to make sure you're capturing everything. And then you go over to file, export, all tracks as audio files or you can use the key command, shift command E. Now you'll then get this dialog box, which is asking you a few questions. So with the range, if you set that up correctly, like I just did, we'll choose export cycle range only. Double check the format and bit depth. And then this part is quite important. So if you're taking things out into a mix, you might want to bypass all the effects plugins, but you need to make sure that that's definitely what you want. For example, if we go back and look at some of the tracks, some of these have Melodyne on, so they've been they've been tuned. Over here, we've got an IR cab loader. So something like that, you definitely want the effects to be bounced because if they don't, it's going to sound terrible or, or more importantly, it's just going to sound wrong. Whereas some of them you might want to turn off. For example, over here, we've got a compressor. If it's going to a mixing engineer, it might be better if those things are taken off so then they can make the decisions for you. So just double check that before you hit bounce. If we just go back to that dialogue again, shift command E. And last one you've got here is include volume and pan automation. Now, if you do that, it's gonna take into account where you have everything in the mix. So in terms of how loud each thing is and where they're placed on the stereo field. That might be what you want to do because then when it gets to the other end, when it gets to potentially the mixing engineers mixing it for you, everything is gonna play back as it was. But the only problem with that is it means every single file is gonna be created in stereo because now it's paying attention to whether it's panned left or right or not. So if you've got something which is panned all the way to the left, it's gonna create a stereo file with audio on the left and nothing on the right. Most of the time I won't leave that checked because I'll make sure that I get everything sorted out in a session before. Now I've done another video which is based around bounce in place. If you're not aware of that feature, go and check it out because it will take you through all the things you need to do in case you wanna bounce effects, bounce automation or anything relevant like that because it's better to do that now before you do the export all feature. Right, when you feel like you're ready to go, choose where you want it to be bounced. It's good practice to just put it into a brand new folder so you know exactly where it is really. And hit export. Okay, once that's done, you can just import it into your DAW. In this case, I'm using Pro Tools, but it will work in absolutely any DAW you like. And now, as you can see, everything is imported perfectly. 
Now with this method, it's not going to load up in exactly the same track order because now it's importing everything alphabetically. But if you did rename your tracks in Logic with a prefix of numbers, so going one to however many tracks you've got, that way it will at least load up in the same manner that it wasn't in Logic in the first place. So good thing about this method is it's going to work in all, da all DAWs and it's super reliable. The drawback is you're going to have lots of audio to trim, all these parts for example which you're gonna to need to do before you start mixing. For me, I don't really find it a chore. I think it's absolutely fine. It doesn't take very long to do, but it is still something to consider. Okay, let's look at the next option. And the next method is to use AAF as an export. Now, most DOWs will accept this. So it is a fantastic option to choose. The good thing about using AAF is it will transfer your session over exactly as you see it. So for example, you can see over here, backing vocals don't start until three quarters of the way through the song and there's no audio in front of it. So it means that it's gonna take note of where that audio is, is in the session and then just display that. The other good thing about it is if you haven't done your edits quite perfectly, like I was saying about in the last one where you have to make sure that you've done that, you can still do some editing afterwards because it's gonna take over the region but it's also going to make note of the clip gain as well and just let, allows you to make some further adjustments. There is a similar issue though with take folders. Since this is a logic only feature, it's not going to copy that over. So over here with the, with the vocals, we have multiple takes on one track. What this is going to do is it's going to take the top layer. It's going to take the comp that you've created and left on the top. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is it's not going to pay attention to anything that's MIDI. So these tracks, which are MIDI tracks, they won't get carried over. In order to do that, you'll need to bounce them as audio first. And then because it's been made a region, it will then transfer. And then finally, and this is probably one of the main things, is it's gonna take everything absolutely dry. There's not any option to bounce these effects with it. So if you've got cab sims or amp sims on there, if you've got Melodyne and whatnot, which you wanna carry over, it's not gonna do so. So you'll need to make sure that they're bounced within the session first. As I said before, I've done a video on bounce in place, so go and check that out if you need to. Right, so now to export, if you go up to file, export, project as AAF file. Check your audio settings and then same again, choose where you want to bounce it and give it a name. Once that's done, you can load that into your DAW. As I said, most DAWs will accept this. So in Pro Tools, we're importing session data. You go and find the AAF file. There it is. Each DAW might have a few options here that you can look at, but for now, we're just going to go with it and just let everything import. Now, as you can see, everything is imported and it looks much more similar to how my session was before. See over here, this is where the backing vocals were coming in partway through the song and there's no audio in front of it, there's no, there's no waste of space there now. And just to look at the additional editing you can do, if we look at that main vocal track which had loads of different takes on it, now the region it's gonna take is the one which was on the top of the comp, like I said before, but it is paying attention to the whole region. So what it means you can do is you can still make some adjustments afterwards, as you can see. It's only gonna go as far as that region exists, but at least you have a few more options and you can still do your fades here or rather correct your fades and edits. Now, this is all well and good, but as you would have noticed from both of them, both of them don't take tempo information or time signature information or any of the markers at all, which might not be a problem if it's just for a mix, but it could be a problem if you want to try and continue the production and you need to know what the tempo was and if there are any changes throughout the song. So that brings me on to MIDI, which is coming up next. So you might want to export the MIDI for a number of reasons. Firstly, you might just want to take these MIDI parts over and then import it into your new session and, and essentially carry on a production or use different software instruments to, to play back the MIDI, whatever you want to do. But the other good thing about MIDI is it takes more information than just that. It's also going to take your tempo information, it's going to take your time signatures and also any markers that you have in the track. Now, before you do this, it's really important, like we did in the very first audio option, is to tidy up your MIDI first. So as you can see with, with this track here, it's in multiple regions. Clearly it's recorded in different takes. Now with lots of DAWs, if you just export it like that, it's not gonna transfer over properly. And nine times out of 10, it won't transfer on the same track, which can be really annoying. So the main thing that you wanna do is tidy things up first. So, so with this track, for example, get rid of that muted part. If you highlight the whole lot, Command J to join, and then it creates one MIDI region. That's gonna transfer over much cleaner. I'm just gonna take that away for now because I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't do that. The one below it has been joined, the one above it has not. And just before we get there, if you have a track which doesn't have any MIDI information in it, but you do wanna transfer over all the tempo, time signature, and marker information, you still can, you just need to put some MIDI in the track itself. So easiest thing to do is create an empty channel 
and then create an empty MIDI region. And then in there, just, just put anything, any old notes, doesn't matter. That means it's going to allow you to actually create the MIDI file. So now if we go over to file, export all MIDI tracks as MIDI file, choose where you want that to go, call it what you want. And then let's jump over to Pro Tools. And now I'm still in the session where I imported the AAF. And as you can see, the tempo is currently at 120. I happen to know that that's an incorrect tempo. It should be 158, I think, but this is the, the default tempo for when you load up a new song. So File, Import MIDI. This will be the same in pretty much all DAWs. They work in a very, very similar way. And then Find Your MIDI File. And now depending on the DAW, you might get a different dialog box up, but ensure that you'll just check in all the necessary things. So in this case, import tempo map, import key signature. And there we go. So firstly, you can see that the tempo is now changed to 158. You've got all of your markers that were there before. The time signature is 44. If it was something different, of course, that would, that would change too. And if you have different tempos and time signatures throughout the song, that would all update in here. Now, if we just go down to the actual MIDI tracks that it brought in, now, you'll notice this one, that this was the one which was one MIDI region, and that's imported perfectly. But above that, this was the one which was in different takes. It's basically created a different channel for each take. Now, it's not the end of the world. I could just edit it and move them all onto one take, like so. But it's going to be a big old waste of time, especially if you've got a whole session full of MIDI instruments. So just make sure that you join those regions before you export. And with markers, that is global for all of the DAWs, so they'll transfer without a problem. But one thing to bear in mind with Logic is if you're using the arrangement track, and that's what you're using to create your, your sections, your markers, it won't carry that over. This is Logic only, so it's not gonna see that as a thing. It's not gonna save that into the MIDI file. So just make sure that if that's important, you've created actual markers as well. It gives you a little bit of an overview of how to transfer projects from Logic to Pro Tools and other DAWs. Is there anything in there that you're finding isn't working for you, or is there anything that you find it might work a little bit better? Maybe leave a comment below and we can get chatting about it, because I'd love to hear what you do. As always, if you like the video, hit like. If you wanna subscribe, hit subscribe. Um, and if you wanna check out a video that I did on Bounce in Place, I'll leave a little link to it up there. Okay, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeah.